So, as a navigating officer, it's very important that you know how to navigate and that you really understand how to do it. As a deck officer on ships, one of our jobs is to passage plan and that involves planning a passage from point A to point B and there's some different things you have to take into account and usually that's efficiency so getting there as fast as possible or using the least amount of fuel but other things will include avoiding bad weather, things that will slow you down or any navigational hazards. In this video we'll be looking at the difference between a great circle and a run line. These are two different types of traveling around the world. And now both a great circle and a run line have their advantages and disadvantages. And we'll look into that at the end of the video. In this video, we're just gonna be really trying to wrap our head around why we use great circles or run lines and just understanding why they are the way they are. This was something I found difficult to wrap my head around at first. And it's definitely not something you should just accept for being the way it is. It's really important that you just understand it. Take the time just to sit down, really think about how this all works and just wrap your head around it. Hopefully this video can just help you just understand a bit quicker. So we'll start off with a rum line. The definition of a rum line is a line on the Earth's surface that cuts every meridian at the same angle. Basically, I grab my compass and I'm gonna head in the exact same direction until I get to the place I wanna be. This seems like the most obvious answer from one point to the other as fast as possible. There's actually another way. That's called a great circle. Now, a great circle, it looks a bit strange. On a Mercator chart, it's like a curve and it looks like we're taking a major detour to get from one point to the other, which doesn't really make sense when you first look at it. But the definition of a great circle is the shortest distance from one point to another on the Earth's surface. So that gets you thinking then, hmm, what, why is that shorter than just following my compass and going in what seems like a straight line? So you might've seen, if you were ever on a long haul flight, you might've seen on the map that curve that they take and you think, okay, what was the point in that? Why don't they just go in a straight line? A great circle, one way to look at it is that it's a line going straight through the center of the earth. So imagine you have the earth here and you just cut it straight down the middle. Now this line that cuts it, that's a great circle. It's the shortest distance around the earth. So an example would be the equator. Also all the meridians that go from the North Pole down to the South Pole and back up again, those are also great circles. Okay, so we're gonna now look at what helped me to understand this concept of a great circle. So what I did was, I pictured myself at the North Pole, okay? So this is the North Pole, looking down on it. Now you wanna imagine yourself just stepping away from the North Pole, just about two steps. Now if you were to head west, you would actually end up going in a circle around the North Pole. Even though you'd be following your compass, you would actually be going in a circle. Now, if you were to step a mile away, it would seem like less of a circle, but in reality, you're just still going around and around in a circle. Now, this is how I imagined it then. Let's say this is Europe, and let's say this is USA. If you're looking at a Mercator chart, we're gonna obviously just think, oh, we just go west, 270, and that'll bring us from Europe to America. But if we look at this now, if we were to do that, it would just bring us in this weird curve that isn't the most efficient way. The most efficient way would be like this. Now this is a great circle. This is the shortest route. Now, obviously we don't use this kind of chart for navigation. We use a Mercator chart. So on a Mercator chart, it's gonna look more like this. Now we can understand slightly better. Each of these points is the North Pole. They've just spread it out. So it's all a bit deformed. So now again, if we put Europe here, America here, we now know that this is not the shortest route. This line, is the same as this line. So clearly we can see now that the best route to take is obviously this straight line, which would look more like this. That's a great circle. Now to do this, it would mean changing your course 
constantly. And it would be the same in this situation. When you're here at the North Pole, your starting course would be something like 300 degrees. But then as soon as you get here at the vertex, now all of a sudden you're heading in a westerly direction. So you can see that it's gonna be constantly changing as you go along. Now, of course, this is gonna have the same principle in the South Pole, but the opposite in a way. So it's gonna look the exact same in this sense, but as soon as you put it on a Mercator chart, let's say this was the equator, everything below that would curve downwards like that. And now that's just because we're going towards the South Pole now. And the equator, this is of course a great circle as well. Now it gets a bit weird when you go from Southern Hemisphere to Northern Hemisphere because we're changing. So let's say you're starting off here and you need to go here. In reality, it's gonna curve one way and then the other on a Mercator chart. So it's gonna look a bit strange, but that would be the most efficient way to get from point A to point B on a Mercator chart. So now that we've kind of gone over the great circle and kind of have a better understanding why it is like that and also run line, we can look at the advantages and the disadvantages of run lines versus great circles. So first with a great circle, biggest advantage of course is just that it's shorter. So you're gonna be more efficient. You'll save money, save fuel. It should get you there faster than a run line. Disadvantages of a great circle, however, is that it can be quite difficult to navigate and even plotting on a chart, it can be quite difficult to do. The computers will do these sort of calculations. If you were to do it without a computer, it's not too bad. It can be a little bit harder to calculate a great circle route. Basically, it's just more effort to do a great circle route, which is only really an excuse if it's not worth the effort. So if it's gonna be a short voyage or something, it's not really worth it then. So kind of linked into difficult to navigate. If you're going through a narrow channel or TSS or areas with a lot of traffic, there's no point in using a great circle. It's just going to be weird to navigate with. No one will understand what you're doing. It'll look like you're just making weird changes of course. Better just to stick to run lines. Keep everything just organized for other ships around you. Making weird alterations every hour or something. You can just be more focused on what your heading is and just carry on like that. Another disadvantage of a great circle, it can bring you up into high latitudes, you'll have uh, a lot of like ice, possibly, may maybe even bad weather. So sometimes if you're gonna take that great circle route over, it, it might actually slow you down if you're hit with storms and ice and things like that. Um, so it might just be better just to take the rum line across to avoid all that. So you really have to take a lot of things into account when you're considering to use a rum line or a great circle so that you can take the best option. And great circle isn't always the most efficient if you're gonna be encountering those kinds of things. So now if we look at a run line, it's kind of just gonna be the opposite of a great circle. So the advantage is, is that it's easy to navigate with. You can passage plan a lot easier going through TSSs and just following the general direction of traffic. Of course, it's gonna be more effective for short voyages. We use rum lines way more often than great circles. You can be more precise with how you passage plan on a Mercator chart using rum lines. Also then, like we said about going into high latitudes, you can avoid ice and bad weather quite easily using a rum line. Things like load line zones, if you want to stay out of the winter zone, where you require a higher freeboard, you can stay down in a summer zone where you can have a lower freeboard, which means you can have more cargo on board. So you might wanna take the run line across a lower latitude so you can avoid those load lines. So now if we look at the disadvantages of a run line, it's not as efficient. You're taking the long route, which isn't always long. It might just be a few miles or a lot more miles. If you're crossing the Pacific, uh, you probably wanna use a great circle route. So yeah, if you're doing long routes, a run line is just gonna be more expensive. You wanna take the most efficient. But what you can do, something called a composite great circle, which is basically when you combine the both. So let's say you wanted to cross the Pacific, going like from China, um, 
over to Mexico or something like that, but then you saw there was bad weather up in the higher latitudes, which you wanted to avoid, you could do a, a great circle and then a rum line and then finish it with another great circle. So you can do those kind of things which are more efficient than just a straight rum line, um, but they're also safer than a, a full great circle. So you can do that as well. So there's different options you can do with that. So yeah, that's great circle versus rum line. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a bit of a better understanding of the difference between a rum line and a great circle and just helps you be a better navigator. So yeah, that's it. All right, see ya.